I started picking them up off the floor of Barrymore's on the stage because I used to wrap the cables at the end of the show and help out there. And at first, I just I didn't even think of it. You know, some of them were monogrammed, some weren't. And then I, I, they started to amass. So I thought, well, I've got to catalog this in some way. I was always a Jimi Hendrix fan, Robin Trower, and I started to keen in on, on guitar players. I never played guitar, but they're the heroes in the, in the rock and roll field, so that's why I started scoping in on, on guitars. I'm like a little kid with hockey cards collecting, you know, I'm not going to trade them or anything unless I have a trader, and if somebody wants one, it's too bad. If you want to look at it, fine, but you're not going to buy it. When I first started collecting, people weren't collecting, and now they see what I've amassed, and everybody wants guitar picks now. Like, I've got to fight with the other guys. There's a Stevie Ray Vaughan pick in there that he personally gave me at a show. That's one of the prized ones. There's also a Gene Simmons pick with fake blood on it, with his thumbprint on it. I picked it up very, very carefully and wrapped it up in a piece of tin foil. There's Eddie Van Halen, both of ZZ Tops, um, Eric Clapton. I got The Edge from U2 and Bono's pick. Very hard to get because their guitar technicians are actually under the stage. Uh, I have a Rolling Stone pick too from the Euro Tour. These are actually rarer than stamps or coins because stamps and coins, they produce hundreds of thousands or millions, but when a guitar player goes out on tour, he may only take a thousand picks by a bag full. So over his career, he may not buy another bag. So the rarity of these things is crazy. There's 726, uh, about 600 monogrammed ones. And then there's some, some artists don't have them, but I still pick up their picks on stage and like Bruce Springsteen uses a plain pick and I, I found it right by his guitar stand and I know he uses a plain white Fender pick and I know it's Bruce Springsteen's pick. So I can't put it in this book, but I have another catalog book of unmonogrammed picks. I even have Jack Layton's pick and he played at the press gallery. We had an insurance adjuster come in and look at the stuff and he said, you're sitting on a dream home here. There's somebody out there that is interested in buying it somewhere, somehow, you know. There's somebody that wants it. But it's not about making money on it and stuff. It's just trying to get it all in one place. And as it says at the beginning, I'm a curator and I'm trying to keep it together. And if people can appreciate it, it's, it's great. When a person dies, it becomes more valuable but it, it to me it's like i'll never get another one or another chance at this one of the regrets i got was i never got a johnny cash pick and afterwards i tried to find them on ebay they were just outrageously priced like people were asking for a thousand dollars for a guitar pick from johnny cash and the most important ones to me are uh, the ones that people initial that don't have a pick but arlo guthrie signed a pick for me with his initials and he said i've never done this before on a pick, and I said, well, don't do it ever again. <laughs> people tell me that, you know, people may have more than I do, but the uniqueness and the, the real cool picks that I have that other people don't seem to be getting is what I'm really proud of, that I have the really unique ones. I've got some really unique ones that have been really hard to find, and other people are like, wow, how did you get that?